Today's topic is motivation and emotion, uh, chapter 10. I'm gonna break this down into three components. We're gonna talk about motivation as a general theory, what it is. Then we're gonna talk about the motivation to eat, and finally about emotions and their function. Motivation is defined as goal-directed behavior. There are three types of goal-directed behavior, biological, emotional, and cognitive. So as a discussion question, I might ask you is, what was your motivation to get up this morning? Was it a biological need? Maybe you were hungry or thirsty or cold. Maybe it was an, a, an emotional need. You were afraid or lonely or happy or excited. Or maybe it was a cognitive need. You had thought, I have to do this. I need to go to work or I need to do my homework. There are three components to motivation. They are persistence, activation, and intensity. In other words, it's the getting started, it's the doing the work, and it's the continuing to do the work. So I often ask students to think about when they do their homework. Is it harder to get started? Is it harder to keep doing your homework? Or is it harder to sort of stay focused and work really hard? Or consider going to the gym. Is it harder to get there or to work hard once you get there? Or maybe to stay there once you arrive, those three components. We can talk about the different theories of action. Uh, for our purposes, I would like to point out um, six different theories. You have one theory, which is the instinctive theory. And this is sort of like the birds, when the birds build their nest. That this is a built-in system pattern of behaviors they are not consciously aware of. They're just following their instinct to act. The drive theory, which is based on a really important concept here called homeostasis. Homeostasis meaning balance, homo, same, stasis, a same state. And the idea is that when you are out of balance, when you are hungry or tired, your body, you will be motivated your behavior will be directed towards finding that balance again arriving at homeostasis incentive theory is the classic that you are your goal directed behavior is about you want something you're incentivized things like stickers on the star chart or um, a wage increase or a good grade those are incentives Arousal theory is kind of a fun one to talk about. Arousal theory says that what motivates us is something called um, sensation seeking. And some people are there, they like, um, they're more, they're motivated by excitement. So they have a need for a lot of sensation. Um, you may be somebody that's okay with coming home and watching reruns of Big Bang Theory and your partner may want to be on the go, go, go. So since this, this could be a conflict between roommates or partners or um, you may be more of a person that likes to hang out at home and your friend may like to ride roller coasters all the time, you have a different need um, for arousal and you're more motivated. There's another set of theories uh, called, like another couple theories what we call humanist theories. And what the humanist theory argue, argues is that what directs our behavior are our cognitive or our cultural interpretations. So our culture tells us that we're supposed to want to do these things or acquire these things. Our culture tells us that we're supposed to want a big house and and a career, and so therefore our behavior is directed towards attaining those things that our culture uh, tells us we're supposed to have. Um, similarly, there's also a humanist theory. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in towards the end of this chapter. It's one o'clock. The goal here says is that we are motivated to grow. So we are program. We're born to become the best version of ourselves to maximize our human potential. And our behavior then is all directed towards being the best version of ourself. That should sound familiar, that's a little bit like Maslow. And then finally, there's an evolutionary theory of motivation that says everything we do is because of our evolutionary biological programming. 
Um, one particular evolutionary theory is what's referred to as an affiliation motive. And what the affiliation motive says, or motive, yeah, motive says, is that we are, are we are directed, we, we act in a way that brings us into the company of other people. So times like now, when many of us are living in isolation, this is, this goes against our internal evolutionary program to be with people. We may be turning to, you know, virtual converse, virtual meetings like this one because of this need to affiliate, this need to be with people. I think this is a really strong theory and I think it explains why the data on loneliness, that people who are lonely have poor health, they die younger, they're more likely to be sad or depressed because at our evolutionary core, we are supposed to be in the company of other humans. Another evolutionary theory speaks to aggression and sex and um, to, to that, that our program, anything that promotes our survival, that we are biologically programmed to act in ways that promote our human survival. And when we feel threatened, when we are afraid, we might turn to aggression. When um, we run out of toilet paper, we might hoard because well, that's an interesting, uh, that is actually an interesting theory that says this run on toilet paper that we're observing is an evolutionary response to the human condition to to be clean, that our species, survive, our survival of our species depends on cleanliness. And we interpret this toilet paper thing as a way of being clean. So when we're afraid that we might not have access to hygiene products, we hoard them. It's an evolutionary response. Now, isn't that an interesting sort of theory that people are hoarding toilet paper because they're evolutionarily drawn to cleanliness and the idea being that cleanliness is part of our, um, is essential to our biological response. All right, I'm gonna stop there and please look for a discussion question on some of this stuff. And then the next video will be about the biological need to eat.